Oh, hello there, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about compositing in Fusion. This is supposed to be just about the easiest, most basic comp that actually looks like a comp and isn't just some text or something that you can do in Fusion. This is for absolute beginners. If you've never picked up Fusion, this should be a great little intro. Here's a look at our nodes, what we're gonna be making. If none of this makes sense, it's okay. This is a beginner thing, you know what I'm saying? Let's take a look at what our comp is. Really what we're doing is taking this photo, and we're putting some text on top of it, but then putting it behind these rocks. This is about the most simple composite you can get. It's just putting something behind something else, splitting this into different planes, so it looks like everything's kind of in one picture. For this one, we aren't gonna deal with video at all. We're basically just making a still graphic, but all the things that we learn are applicable to to video things, but that's like level two. You know what I'm saying? This is level one. First thing let's do is open up our media pool in the upper left-hand corner, click on that, and I'm gonna right-click anywhere in the empty space and say new Fusion Composition. That's gonna ask us some stuff. We'll just call it Fusion Composition 3 because we're so pro. Create, and then we'll bring this into list view and double click Fusion Composition 3. So that opens up our blank composition. I'll just go up and close our media pool now because we don't, we aren't gonna need that. And if you've never used Fusion before, there's a couple parts to the interface. Up here are where the viewers go. That's where you view what you're actually doing. Down here are the nodes. This is kind of the building blocks of what you're gonna be making. And here in the middle, these little icons, this is our toolbar, and you can grab these icons and drag them into the nodes to make all kinds of fancy nodes. So what is a node? Well, a node has one job, it does one thing. So if we wanna make a black background, this far left node called the background node, we can drag this in, and all this does is make a black background. If we wanna look at any node, we can hit either one or two on the keyboard, and that'll bring it up here in the viewers. You have two viewers. You can either view this on viewer one or viewer two or both. And you can pick any node from down here to view on the viewers. We'll get to why in the world you would ever do that here in just a second. But for now, this node has one job to make a background. You look at the background here on one of the viewers. And if you wanna change the color of the background, basically anything that you want to change about a node happens over here in the inspector. If this isn't open, make sure to click this little inspector button. And this is kind of the properties of whatever you have selected. And that's pretty much how it works all throughout Resolve. But right here where it says color, let's make this green. Sure, and now we have our green backgrounds here. I'll just hit one on the keyboard again, just so that we only see this once, just in our second viewer. And you can go ahead and make this any color you want. It doesn't matter at all because we're not ever going to see this. What we're gonna do is just set our background size with this background node. I'm gonna put this over on the left. And then you'll also notice another node down here just hanging out, creeping on us, media out one. And media out one has one job. Anything that we connect to this node, it's going to render out when we actually export this comp. So to connect something to a node, all you do is just grab this little gray square and drag it to connect onto one of these little triangles. Then I can hit two on the keyboard. And now we're looking at what media out will render. So if we wanted to make this comp, I can go over to edit and in a blank timeline, I can just grab my fusion composition, drag this down. And now we have this orange comp. So whatever we connect to our media out here in Fusion is what's going to show up here in the timeline. Now let's bring in our picture. There are a ton of different ways to bring in a picture, but the easiest way is just to find it on your system and drag it into the nodes. Here we have this photo. I'll just drag that into our nodes and then I can select this and it will make a node called media in one. This node's one job is to bring in some media. So if we hit one on the keyboard, we can see this is bringing in this photo. By the way, if you want to follow along, I have a link to this photo in the description. It's just from Unsplash. But what we wanna do is actually put this photo over our background. Now you'll notice in Fusion, there's not really any layers. There isn't a layer panel or anything like that, like you would see in Photoshop or other compositing apps. So how do we put something over something else? Well, remember we're building with nodes and each node has one job. So towards kind of the left of the middle of our toolbar here, there's one called merge. If I grab that and drag that down, this makes a merge node. What a merge node does is put stuff over other stuff. How do we hook it up? Well, instead of connecting our background one to our media out, I'm just gonna grab this little connection and connect it to our merge, put our merge down here and connect our merge to our media out. And now we have nothing going on, yay. You'll notice the merge has two little triangles. One is yellow and one is green. The yellow one is the background and the green one, if you mouse over, is the foreground. So we can take the output of our media in one and now look what happens. It's putting this photo over our background. 
but it's really huge. We, we don't want that. So why don't we add another node? Let's move this media in one up a little bit and we're gonna add a transform node because we wanna transform this photo before we put it over our background. We wanna change the size and position and stuff of it. This little icon just to the left of center right here is called transform. You can grab this and you can drag it down here in the nodes, but you could also just drag it over a connection here. And when it turns blue, that will actually hook it up in between one node and another. When you run something through a transform, you can select the transform and adjust what it does. So we can go over here to our inspector and adjust the sizing. We can even grab this little widget and move it around. Now we can see, yeah, this is being put over the orange background and we're just gonna maybe size this up a little bit and get some nice framing here, something like that for our final comp. Now, just a reminder, media out one is in our right hand viewer, which is what happens when you select it and hit two on the keyboard. So this is what the timeline is gonna see. If I switch back over to edit, that's what we see on the timeline. But remember, you can choose any node to display in either of these viewers. And right now I'm looking at my media in, and it even tells me the fancy resolution here, 3900 by 2600, which explains why it came in pretty big over our 1080p background. But if I select the transform, and then hit one on the keyboard, we'll see it's sizing this down before we put it over our merge. So you can kind of look at different pieces of your comp just by selecting the different nodes and hitting one on the keyboard to kind of preview everything. So you can kind of look at little pieces this way. And I pretty much always like to have media out in the second viewer because it kind of feels like the edit page, right? You have your kind of final viewer right here and over here is your source viewer, which is kind of the same thing. Like you can preview media and everything on the left side and what everything will look like on the right side. Kind of the same thing that I like to do in Fusion, although either one could be any part of your comp. So now that we have our image over our background, let's add our text. So let's move over a little bit in our nodes and I'm just gonna push this media out to the right a little bit. And let's grab another icon. I'm gonna grab this one right here, this T. This is for text plus. I'll grab that and drag this over and we'll just put that right here. Again, this node has one job. All it does is make text. If we want to adjust what the text looks like, we have to go up here in the inspector. But before we can actually see anything, we have to merge this text over what we have so far, which again, I could grab a merge node like this and drag it down and connect everything like that. But an easier way to make a merge node is just to grab the output of any node and drag it over the little output square of any other node and look what happens. It makes a merge node automatically and it connects the one that I grabbed first and makes that the foreground. So now when we type some text here, that goes over our background. Let's type adventure and pick a decent font and we'll make this a little bigger and we'll put it up here a little bit, something like that maybe. And you can do all kinds of different things with this text plus node. There are a ton of different little options for color and sizing and animation and stuff. Definitely check that out. One thing that I'm gonna do is go to the fourth tab over, which is shading. And right here where it says, select element. I'm going to go to element two and click enabled. And what that's going to do is add a outline here. Let's make the color something else. I don't know, something like that, just to make that pop a little bit, make it a little thicker. And this is a huge deep world that you could jump into, but that's what we're doing. Great. So now we have a pretty basic comp. We have some text over a background, but now we're going to get fancy. We want to take this text and put it behind these mountains. Now we could do this a bunch of different ways. We could, for instance, trace out these mountains with a pen tool and make a mask and do that kind of stuff, but that's a lot of work. So what we're gonna do instead is actually key out this sky. That means just select the range of colors that's in the sky and kind of delete them and then put another copy of these mountains over everything so that it looks like these letters are behind the mountains. So the first thing that we're gonna do is copy this photo right here. And the cool thing about nodes is you don't actually need to make a copy. I could certainly grab this media in one, hit control C, double click off of this and hit control V and do things that way and merge this over everything and that would totally work. But the cool thing about nodes is that you can actually connect them to multiple things. So I can use any part of this node tree in multiple places at once. So if I wanted to take this media in one and merge it over everything, I can just grab it and merge it over our last merge here. And that will make another merge and it will put this image over everything. And that totally works. If we were to move this around, we'd see that's on top of everything. But we have a problem. This is sized wrong because remember we took this image 
We brought it in and then we sized it and then we put it over stuff. So what we should actually do is take it from here after it gets resized. So let's just break that connection. I'll take the output from transform and put it over our merge. And now we have what we should have. If I turn this merge on and off, we can see we're putting this scaled image over everything. So how do we get rid of the sky? Well, we're gonna use something called a delta keyer. And here's a special little trick. If you double click somewhere here in the node graph and then hit shift spacebar, that'll bring up a fancy little secret. And let's just type key, K-E-Y, and we get all the different things that are called keyers. What we're gonna do is just grab delta keyer and hit add, and that's gonna add a node right where we double clicked. And this is an effect that we're gonna run this transform through before we even merge it. I'll take this connection and just put it into Delta Keyer and take the output of Delta Keyer and put it into the merge. And now nothing's really happened because we haven't selected our sky yet. With the Delta Keyer selected here, I can go up to where it says background color and grab this eyedropper and drag it onto where I want to, which if I move around a little bit, we can see a preview of what's happening. Look at this. It's getting rid of the sky color so we can see that text behind everything. Let's look at just what the Delta Keyer is doing. If I hit one on the keyboard, we can see what it's doing is just deleting anything that's kind of that blue color, which is totally fine for what we're doing. All we're really worried about is this edge right here. We want this edge to be really nice. And right now it's not really nice. It's kind of, it's kind of bleh. So let's fix that. I'm gonna bring this Delta Keyer up in the second view just so that we can see it on the screen recording next to our inspector. Let's zoom in here. And there are a bunch of different things that you can adjust with this Delta Keyer, but I'm gonna go to the third one over under Matt, and there are all these different controls to make this edge a little bit better. One thing I'm gonna do is clean the foreground and clean the background a little bit. And then this erode dilate slider, if you push this back and forth, it kind of eats away more of the edge or less of the edge depending on how you want. And if you grab the number and move your mouse to the left a little bit, you can kind of push this out to where it doesn't have that kind of bluish white fringe anymore. And maybe we'll blur it just a little tiny bit. So now we have a much nicer edge on this mountain that for what we're doing, if I hit two on the keyboard for our media out, is gonna work pretty great. We still have a problem right here though. And because of that, what we'll do is just push our clean foreground up a little bit, and that will do a pretty good job of cleaning that without a whole lot of work. Now, this isn't the very, very best way to do a key, but it will totally work for what we're doing, and we can always see if there's problems by clicking on and off the Delta key right here. So this little switch, if we turn this off and on, we can see the difference between when it's on or off. And we do have a little bit of problem here in the windshield, it's doing some funky things. So one thing that we can do is just grab this threshold slider and push this up a little bit, and that should get rid of most of our problems. If we turn this off and on, we won't see too much difference, and it'll still look pretty good up here. Not dilate this quite so much. And there we have our text behind our mountains. Pretty cool. So again, let's go through and figure out what we're doing here. Here we have our background. Again, it doesn't matter what color it is. It could be black, it could be whatever. All this is doing is setting the sizing for the comp, which is 1920 by 1080. And then what we're doing is taking an image, this big image here, scaling it down, and then merging it over our background. Then we're gonna take some text and merge it over our photo. Then we're taking our photo again and keying it to get rid of the sky and putting that over everything so that it looks like our text is behind our mountains. And that is what is gonna be rendered to the timeline. So if we switch back over to the edit page, there we have our comp. So yeah, that's some basic compositing inside of Fusion. I hope that makes sense for any of you Fusion noobs out there. And I hope that you can go on an adventure of your own because adventures are where life happens in adventure life. Life adventures. It's where it happens. Believe me. Hey, thanks for staying all the way to the end. You're the best. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like this so that I know that you do that and you did stay to the end. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool, cool.